still have to jump off a cliff just knowing that you will not crash. Let me tell you, everybody has their baggage and everybody has their demon. So you might as well deal with your own demon and everything will work out fine. <laughs> If you're not in control of your emotions, your emotions will be in control of you. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Emotions. Our topic today is on the principles of relationship and marriage. The principles of relationship and marriage. By the grace of God, I have been opportune to be married for eight years and of course before I got married I was in relationships so I think that I know a thing or two about relationships and one thing that I know about marriage or what keeps a marriage going or what keeps a marriage healthy truly is communication I have a guest today and I know that he will be speaking on the th four C's in marriage um, which which cannot be far from from the truth but just a little bit that I have to chip in you know, is um, to encourage those of you who are married. First of all, congratulations um, for hanging in there because a lot of people who are not married think that marriage is a bed of roses. It is not. It is not a bed of roses. First of all, it is not even a bed and it is not a rose. <laughs> yes, there are moments of, of bliss. Yes, it is a beautiful thing. You have a permanent person there to, to uh, conversate with. If you are tired of your marriage today, I encourage you to pipe down. Just calm down and listen. Allow the other person to communicate while you listen. And when, and when you are communicating, please, spouse, listen. If you communicate and you do it from a place of, of being genuine, there is nothing, there is nothing that you cannot conquer in marriage. But when you want to be self-centered and be egotistical, first of all, ego means edging God out. And I'm not talking about, um, 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 the Christian God or the Muslim God. I'm like, I'm just talking of the creator period. When you have an ego and you do whatever you want to do, that means that you have not invited a third party into your marriage, which, which is the person who brought you together in the first place. The universe brought you together in the first place. You being able to see each other and you being able to have all the feelings that you have, even the capability of having the children that you have, everything has been solidified by this creator, by the universe. When you choose to ignore that and do whatever you want to do, you will have canker worms in your marriage. And I'm saying this from a place of experience. There's nothing I've not done in my marriage. Oh. I have run away from the house. I have reported him to my parents. I've reported him to in-laws. I have screamed. I have shouted. I have rolled my eyes. I have insulted him. He has shouted on me. I have shouted on him. At the beginning, I was... I, like I used to hit him. My husband has never hit me and he would never hit me. But my husband was emotionally abusive. He would do the silent treatment. He would walk away. He would slam doors. He would not talk to me for three days. He would not touch me for weeks. Me, on the other hand, I would scream and I would yell and I would hit him. And to me, I thought that that was my way of getting his attention. Until we had to start seeing a therapist and we had to start seeing counselors. And we realized that we both have to deal with the demons that are within our own selves before we can deal with the demons that, that is in the dynamic of the marriage. When you deal with your foxes and you deal with your own weaknesses, then the marriage will be strong. But when he brings in his weaknesses and you bring in your weaknesses, the marriage will definitely be weak. But if both of you can admit that you both have weaknesses then both of you will be strong please stay tuned so i can get my guest welcome back to emotions with omenasa my guest is here with me he is the founder of the School of Articulation, and he is none other than Mr. Komolafe. He is also a behavioral therapist. Thank you so much for being here with us, sir. Thank you so very much. Good to be here with Tominisa on emotions. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So um, our topic today is the principles of relationships and the principles of marriage. And you know how 
marriage is definitely a gift from god it is awesome it is wonderful you have a companion you're very sure that when you go home somebody will be there you have children but there are so many obstacles in marriage there are so many roadblocks there is so much that goes on and a lot of people cannot talk about it because you know like some people think that marriage actually is a do or die affair um so can you please enlighten us on how we can handle marriage without coping but actually enjoy marriage and that without enduring without enduring without enduring yes sir. you see any product or uh, good you buy the marriage is not for purchase all of a necessity come with the manual the manual of operation the do's and the don'ts and all the rules and the etiquette that guides a certain principle and the idea behind it so when you get the concept of marriage completely wrong from the beginning then you are ahead to hit the rocks no matter where you are where you are from and who you are and with who you are operating because when you follow the rules and the principles and you know beyond the shadow of a doubt what the institution of marriage stands to represent then you are good to go mm. so getting it right ab initio is critical to making a success out of it what is marriage marriage is not just a union of two living together because they are matured they have money have gone to school and blah blah the next thing is to set to raise a family <laughs> no that is not marriage marriage is a call to responsibility marriage is a call to maturity marriage is a call to decision making because you say yes i'm a responsible adult emotionally physically financially and otherwise and i need a compliment that will stay with me and be with me forever so that where i'm just thinking alone imagining alone talking alone i have my other People call it other half or no, 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 no. You are whole in your personality, intuitively, intelligently, and even by way of your interaction. But you are saying, see, I've reached a state of maturity where I no longer need to think, reason, do things alone. So I need a compliment, not a completion. Marriage don't complete us. It actually complement us and brings out the best in one so when you understand that from the beginning that's a call for responsibility mm -hmm. it's a call to maturity mm -hmm. and service then it changes the whole game entirely then you know that yes i'm here to serve not to look for service not to look for cook. You want to cook, anybody, any lady out there, even men are better cooks these days. I'm sure I cook better than you. <laughs> I'm you actually sure you are kind of uh, Personality. <laughs> uh, but you know what? It takes fusion from the within. So making a, a choice and choosing a life partner it's a, a lot, a, so, a lot that goes into it. Talking about fusion, um, there is. I have been married for eight years, and I have, I have been in situations with my husband where I know for a fact that we were glued. We were just glued together. Everything was aligned, and then we've had situations of where it almost felt like, "Come, did I make a mistake?" So, what are those little foxes that? that um, impedes a gluing, a gluing, a fusion in marriage. Very critical there. Talking about uh, what glues two 
uh, spouses together were love, affection. You discover the first love by which so many people come into that relationship uh, is fast fading away and fading out. So what do you have? You have the opposite. And then people go into marriage not really to make contributions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are looking what for you, what they can get. What they can get out. Yes. Accumulation. Mm -hmm. Oh, when I marry you, I have this intention in my mind that oh, so so and so will happen. You will do this. You will do that. You will do that. When you go to marriage, going to marriage with such a card mm -hmm. of request, mm -hmm. then you are out to get frustrated because you must understand what it takes what it involves marriage is not a bed of convenience you don't go into marriage with the sense and the mentality of seeking convenience in fact there is marriage by convenience which people practice in some <laughs> other clients which you know too well yes. and you lived over there you marry by 10 30 in the morning and get divorce papers by mm -hmm. 11. yes Yes, and just, then you get all the papers that... You get all the papers and all of that. Or do, <laughs> let's just go and con connect it there so as to get some other papers. And by the time you do it, that is a complete abuse. Emotionally, mm -hmm. physically, mentally, and otherwise, which does not occur well. What glues a relationship is the love, is the desire is the determination to want to see it succeed no matter what in life you know minister you're going to have the good the bad and the ugly when you find genuine love no wind i say it again no wind can dissuade you in fact the wind will contribute to bringing out the best of your love juices love is actually a juice that when you press the individual who carries it in a marriage relationship, then you see the fragrance, you see the, the, the taste of the true spouse you have. But when it's like going the opposite direction and you are beginning to misbehave, it means you don't really have what you profess. So when I press you, minister, in a relationship, whatever comes out of you is your true self. Now, what comes out? Yeah. What are certain things that um, do come out? Yes. Hate can come out. We're not saying every man has to be perfect to marry. No. Marriage is actually to enable you to work on some of your imperfections. Yes. And to show you in clear-cut language, lucid language, what your strengths are, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threat. Because you never can see yourself alone, being alone. So you need that partner, that spouse, for which you have been intimately bonded and connected to a wedding. I'm not talking of, oh, you are trying to espouse yourself to a partner. No, you are already married. So you are a judge to be one in your spirit, in your soul, in your body. And the height of which, for which, or oh, sexual intimacy and all of that, which is another gamut and a world of, on, on, on its own. So there must be that intimate connection and fellowship interaction with each other that we cascade all toward mental and emotional reasoning before it climaxes at physical bodily union so it's affection down the line inside out outside in that's not to say you are perfect but you see the differences that we see with each other are actually the uh, building bricks or uh, block for which the marriage relationship ought to be consummated 
and consolidated. So variety is the spices of life. So you never happens? can marry yourself. To say, oh, you know, I'm cool and gentle. I must look for a cool and gentle person, a uh, spouse and all of that, so that everywhere will be cool. Will be cool. <laughs> no, you're cool and gentle and all of that. Look for an ominisa there who will throw your house <laughs> into some certain uh, emotional ballistic <laughs> missiles that will get you hot so that you can compliment. Mm? Okay. You see, you must pull from that end and from this end in order to make room for harmony, not acrimony. So, so you must be ready to shift ground to a shift little ground. here and a little there to make a holistic picture okay. of what your home ought to be. Okay. So I'm just going to ask you direct questions. Number one, what do you feel um, about battery? Number two, what do you feel about the sexual intimacy in marriage? Is it permissible for a husband or wife to insist on intimacy even though the other partner um, is not interested at the time? Would we call that rape? And um, also, what, what is the specific thing that, that breaks a marriage? So those three things, one, battery, two, does does the word rape actually exist in marriage and then three what is the one obstacle or or ingredient that would destroy a marriage battery rape and all of those other manifestations behavioral violations in marriage are all first causes of a defect once there is a breach in communication, mm. and there's a breach there, everywhere. Yeah, do you see? It affects what goes for one goes for all. Once there is communication breakdown, nothing flows. Even mindset are misjudged. Mm -hmm. Things you say are often misinterpreted. So yes. ensure that there is no break in communication. Yeah. No gap. Once there is gap, anything feels it. Mm -hmm. In life, there is no empty gap. Mm -hmm. Something of necessity will have to fill it. So, four things every couple must know. One, keep the contact alive. Eye contact, talk contact, ear contact, have a listening ear. Mm. Don't be quick. Don't be rash in your decision mm -hmm. or in your statement. Have a listening ear to your partner, whether the good, the bad, and the ugly. He is your partner, no matter what. You have been fused together. You've been joined together. So contact is critical. Then from that contact, physical contact, you, you, you will know that even some relationship, they hardly hold hands. They say, I beg, leave my hand. And we're outside. That's the more reason. Shubon, that's not to say you go off overboard, but you see the eye contact, the talk contact, oh hi there, and all of that, all of those gestures eh, are lubricating fluid mm. in relationship. Contact from contact, take it up to the next step of connection. Mm -hmm. In contact, you, you 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 maybe you're present or by reason of telephone and all of that, mm -hmm. just to develop. An aura of, of, of mm -hmm. your partner and all of that, being around or not being around, and then connection. Okay, so contact and and connection. connection. The second stage mm -hmm. in connecting, you try to hear and then trying to understand your partner from his or her own point of view. Mm -hmm. Okay, why is he saying this and all of that? And when you do it out of affection. And out of genuinity. Genuineness. Genuine intention. Yes. So that's to say your that's not to say your, your spouse is perfect, but you're trying to hear and see from his or her own angle so that you can empathize mm -hmm. with your spouse. Very important. And then from from contact to connection, then the third C is contribution. 
contribution and because of time, yes. what would be the fourth C? Communication. It's, it's, it's a natural byproduct. So contact. Contact, connection, connection contribution. Contribution. We give back to communication. Okay. So you are communicating well. So battery will be out of it. Of course. All right. Whether outside of marriage or in marriage, I hope you do know that there is also rape in marriage. Yes. Because it takes two to tango. You see, <laughs> sexual inti intimacy is a call to the height of harmonious love. And what do I mean by that? Oh, we are bonded in our spirit. We are bonded in, in our, our mind. mind. And in your body. Uh, then your body can flow. But in a situation where there is no bonding in the spirit, mm. in the mind, mm. and you want it in the flesh, mm. uh, this is it's outright uh, falsity there, and that is rape. And that is abuse. And that is abuse. It becomes mechanical. Yeah. The emotional uh, attachment to it, it's completely warped. And once it is that situation, it is what I call an animalistic behavior, <laughs> for which you need a therapist, a behavior therapist like me, to be able to, <laughs> to, fix. to fix together. <laughs> we'll pull out the violation, uh, throw it away, and bring you back to definition. Thank so that you. when you are defined from within, you can be refined on the outside, including awesome. in bed. Awesome. awesome. So how refined Thank are you? you. <laughs> I think I am very refined. <laughs> then I will ask my brother okay. and friends. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for, for enlightening us. And so, thank you so much, my viewers, for watching today. You um, listened and you heard to, and you heard Mr. Komalafe talk about the four C's in marriage, which is communication, connectivity, contribution and what was the other one no this is the arrangement and the order because if you are climbing this staircase okay you so have to begin from order. the first okay. step contact contact in all sense of it mm -hmm. that will give back to connection, connection. where there's interaction and interplay and of then flow then that makes all contribute because you can't connect without contribution mm -hmm. there will be a flow inside out and the holistic picture is communication. And then lastly, when you break it down and you don't follow through, you're going to have assault one of the days, you're going to have rape, you're going to have abuse. And to, to, the worst case scenarios is that you'll find couples Death killing and, themselves. Yes, yes. This is completely odd and it shouldn't be forbidden. So, you need help, be. you need to talk to us and let's see how to put. The pieces together to make a whole again is possible. Awesome. Well, until next time, thank you for watching. You will have to jump off a cliff just knowing that you will not crash. Everybody has their baggage and everybody has their demon. So you might as well deal with your own demon and everything will work out fine. <laughs> if you're not in control of your emotions, your emotions will be in control of you.